Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if you're a fan of point and click style games, you're going to enjoy today's topic. Today what we're looking at is something called Escoria. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but I think half you tune in to hearing me pronounce words wrong anyway, so hey, we'll just go with it. Escoria, I actually covered just recently. Back in February, I did a summary post of uh, game engines for developing visual novels or adventure games. I know the kind of a weird genre mashup there, uh, but I kind of broke down what your options are for creating those two genres of games and as part of that process. So we did some dedicated visual novel things like Ren Pi and Kiri Kiri, etc. Uh, but we also covered Escoria for the Goodo Game Engine. I said at the time, at some point in time in the future, I am going to cover that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to some point in time in the future. Now, this one is all about creating your traditional point-and-click style games. It is built on top of the Godot game engine. It works with Godot 3.x. I tried it with 4. It didn't work. I'm assuming at some point in the future it will. Not really expecting to work with the beta version. Just do be aware that there's the you're going to want to go with the stable, most current release of 3.x. Um, it provides all of the features and functionalities you would expect to create a point-and-click style game. Uh, we'll come back to the, the details of it later on. It's basically implemented as Escoria Core. Uh, but on top of that, uh, what I'm going to demonstrate today is the Escoria demo game, which actually will contain, if you go to your add-ons folder right here, you're going to see all the Escoria uh, examples are shown here. And this is an Escoria, well, this is the demo opened up inside of the Godot game engine. And again, if you've ever worked with like um, a scum style game, so... Um, Day of the Tentacle, Manic Mansion, uh, or um, similar games such as Neuromancer from back in the day. Uh, you know the kind of games we were talking about here today. Also like Heroes Quest, that kind of stuff. Um, this, that's exactly what Escoria sets out to do. Now, the way you go about doing things, you could do the old school scum verb based approach. Uh, they've made it modular in nature, so you can kind of go with whatever UI implementation you wish. If you want to go ahead and grab Escoria, Escoria from a location other than just cloning the GitHub repository, you can actually find it in the asset library. Ironically, it is asset number two as of most recently updated, so apparently it just got an update on here. But let's say that that didn't work. What you want to do is just come in here and search for Escoria and here you're going to find the core. This is what you need to add to your game. This will create a template that you can build your game from. Uh, you also see here you've got a pair of uh, UI options, one for a verb-based UI and one for a mouse-driven UI. It also has a simple dialogue system. You can use this or you could use another more complex dialogue system, something like Dialogic if you wish, or you could roll your own, of course, as well. Uh, but the key one you're going to need is that guy right there. Now, this example uses a couple of these. If you go here and look in the add-ons folder, you're going to see you got a uh, score your car, but you've also got the verb um, driven version and so on uh, already implemented here. So you can grab it via the asset lib, no problems at all. And here you can see a simple room within Escoria and how things are set up. So you got a number of different uh, nodes. So see this one is an ESC location. This is an ESC, um, what are you? basically uh, another entity within the world here. Uh, and then we've got these things here are um, using traditional um, game objects built into the normal Godot game engine. And it's a combination of using their provided classes, which by the way, if we come in here and take a look at anything starting with ESC is one of their extensions. And you can see here, there's like things like dialogue managers, inventory managers, uh, things for defining rooms, for defining backgrounds. So if you have like parallax graphics going on, uh, they have an adventure game focused camera set up and so on. So all the tooling that you need to create a traditional uh, adventure style game, including uh, player um, definitions there, they're all here and available. Almost all of them have been implemented as uh, GD script. So you can kind of change and tweak them to your heart's content. So you're gonna see here in this particular example, we have our uh, player, for example. Where is the player? All right, let's go find it. Okay, character, Mark. I see here, Mark, we'll open him up. Mark is a do, 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 player, ESC player. Pretty straightforward on the whole. Uh, we also have, this guy will have a number of different animations defined and different directions, and it takes care of 
um, the rest of the work for you. You can also change the animation speed and so on. So you have all the tools in there for having to create the players, to create the room, to create the clickable objects, and it takes care of the mechanics for you. Also have an inventory system in here. Uh, it uses their built-in system for doing um, dialogues. So they've got their dialogue system, but you can use the Google, um, the Godot game engines, internationalization systems. Uh, so you kind of got a nice uh, mix between existing Godot systems and then extensions where they needed to add more. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll play the demo so you can see the kind of games that this thing can create. Uh, you can have it, they actually have their own scripting language here as well. So you can do things like have an animated cutscene. Uh, you can have it respond to various different things. One thing you're gonna find when you first load this up, you may have to come in here. Let's uh, turn the music way down, by the way. Uh, come down in here and change it to English. Um, just that's the way it defaulted. Uh, come on in here, let's start a new game. So you can see pretty straightforward. This is using a verb style command. Uh, you navigate around the world, single click, and then double click to do it faster, to move faster. Uh, you can click items in the world. So you see here, we're doing look at. You're gonna look at that one. And you're gonna see we have one, um, or do I have to use? No, if I look at, look at this thing. So there we get the dialogue system set up above its head. Whereas if I look at this one, we have another implementation for, come on, look at, I don't know what there, we have another dialogue pop-up going on. And then you've got here, this is defined. So if we go back to the Godot engine, you're gonna see that this is uh, a zone area, leads to another room and so on. And then here we have instead, uh, so we're gonna use a use verb on this guy and then you can see you've got things that when there's an interaction you can have it trigger off and play animation so all of this is handled for you uh, you could do a lot of this with gd script if you want but they have their own scripting language in here as well which makes basically life easier to work with so here you saw that was everything we just looked at uh, different areas here this is using uh, collision polygon and a, a location for handling that particular stuff over here you see that is our exit zone it is using collision polygon and once again a location that has a script attached to it uh, everything by the way uses uh, global um, global ids uh, that you can identify so anything that you set up so if i go back here to the 2d and then pick a, an esc object you're gonna see everything can have a global ID of, uh, attached to it. Doesn't need to, uh, but that's how you can kind of um, associate items or you can have them, uh, something that moves within the world or whatever, when you wanna to refer to things globally, there is this ID system that is built into the Escoria engine. All right, so we're gonna head on over to the documentation. Uh, that's actually where this thing really shines. It has really good documentation that kind of walks you through uh, the entire process. Here you go, basically starting from uh, creating a template and then here's how you would set up and create a character. Um, again, it's defined, they have all of these various different classes defined for you, such as uh, ESC player uh, is the base of the character that you set up the animations on it. These are the various different animations from the different directions that it handles for you. Uh, you, you tell it how this guy actually walks and so on, but it is all documented. You come down here, you wanna play some audio. Uh, there is audio playing built in. And here's where we kind of get into a neat area over the Scoria. Uh, again, you can use GD script for doing a lot of things, but they also have their own Escoria script, um, which has the ESC extension and it has, here's a simple script. So it play sound and then you're using the traditional URL mechanism of, um, you know, from GD script in general. Uh, and if we go and take a look at what this script is capable of, so here we can see the language reference. It's got things, again, everything is handled with a global ID. You can get it that way. Um, you can do dialogues and conversations using this thing. You can have events. Events are set up with this colon value in front of them. So on the setup event, we're gonna teleport the player to this location. And then over here, what you're seeing in brackets is the conditionals. Uh, so you can have it do this if this, so things in square brackets. So it's a very simple and straightforward um, programming language. By the way, also uh, the pound sign means that it's a comment that you're dealing with there. So. You can use it for your dialogue. So the dialogue here, here's a simple way that you can have a branching dialogue. Again, comment, event. So on the event of talk, it does the command of say, and then hello, and then the worker will say, how can I help you? Again, you can have different conversations set up so that they work differently. Remember we saw one was as a, a pop out, the other one was as a thought bubble over your head. Uh, you can implement those however you wish. And here you can see a conditional, so on, so we get two options here. This is your first option. 
This is your second option. In the case of the first option, you do this. Second option, you do that. So you see a very straightforward scripting language is also available there. So you don't really have to get into the nitty gritties of programming that much. It is a very uh, simple system. The downside is I don't think Godot officially recognizes ESC files. So you're going to have a bit of a pain to, to work with them. I kind of wish they could extend Godot out a bit uh, so that it treated an ESC file, same as it did like a GD script file, but uh, it's a pretty big ask, I think, at this point in time. Uh, by the way, you got a whole bunch of other tutorials here, for example, um, load and save tutorials here. And once again, you're gonna find there is a system in place. So all the stuff that you'd have to roll yourself if you were doing your own uh, adventure game, so, such as a save manager, uh, it, they have, they've implemented that for you. Uh, and it kind of takes care of all the various different settings. Uh, it's a very interesting project for sure. Uh, again, if, if it doesn't fit for you, there are a variety of other options and I will link this down below. Also do be aware, these two, Dialogic and Godot Dialog Manager are specifically for doing conversations. And if you'd prefer to do that over um, the, the Ascoria, you know, reference template or rolling your own, uh, that is an option as well. But anyways, that is the Ascoria project. It is an MIT licensed open source project. You can get it via the asset lib. Uh, I say if you're going to check it out, however, you're probably your best bet is to clone this repository right here. Just to start with this project, uh, it's all just kind of loaded in as an add-on. Uh, so uh, what you'll find is it is updated quite frequently. The other thing that you're gonna wanna be aware of though, is you're gonna wanna go to the development branch. Uh, so I think it was especially true on the story of core. Uh, the main branch hasn't had an update in six months, whereas you're seeing frequent releases. So these are actually available in this branch right here, which has had frequent updates uh, is 161 commits ahead of the main branch. So it is very much under active development, but it is being developed in the develop branch. So you wanna make sure you got the latest and greatest. You're gonna to wanna to use the develop branch if you are checking out Ascoria. So that is Ascoria, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is a point and click style adventure framework built on top of the Godot game engine. A uh, very robust project and again, it is well documented and I always appreciate that aspect. Let me know what you think, comments down below. I'll talk to you all later, goodbye.